Well, today I'm going for a change. Rather than classic Grand Prix, I'm watching the full uh, version of Das Boot. And this is one that uh, you have to watch the full uncut German broadcast version. And you watch it in German with English subtitles if you need them. Now, I do understand German, so uh, I'm going to be listening in. I have the subtitles up because my German is not great. So I can just kind of pick up on any words that I don't understand and get the good gist of things. It's really good actually, a little tip for you. If you want to keep up with the foreign language but have no native speakers to converse with, watch DVDs in the appropriate soundtrack. Uh, it's something I've been doing since DVDs uh, first turned up in the late 1990s and for me it was one of the uh, unique selling points, the sort of the killer app on DVD that sold the format to me. I was quite an early subscriber. So down here Das Boot, uh, which uh, if you've watched Beer Fest, there's some great uh, in-jokes, including it's got Jürgen Prochnow in as well, so it's another great film. Um, but what am I up to here today? Well, there's not a lot going on. It's pretty much as you saw uh, at the end of my last uh, period of filming, and you probably hear in the background, they're digging up the road outside. It is muted by all the insulation, but you can still hear it, so... Uh, Sometimes I do wonder, if I'm being loud up here, how much can people outside actually hear? Now, for those of you that have been talking about the lighting, yeah, I am well aware that the lighting up here is woeful. Basically, we've got the original light that was up here with an old energy-saving bulb in there, and that is still just a temporary measure. I've got some LED lights on order, but they haven't arrived yet. So uh, don't keep telling me that I need to improve the lighting. It's already in hand. It's just because uh, I'm working so quickly, uh, they haven't arrived yet. But I'm going to give this a whirl. Um, I'm going to try and do it single-handed and um, ah, the nibs of these are actually pretty hard so I'm going to have to work on this and I need both hands so I'm going to quickly do it and then film the results. Well that's um, the end effect. I just had a quick run over with the permanent marker. Um, I don't know actually. I've got to clean the rail tops it's certainly better, but it's not perfect. Now, the other option, knocking around here somewhere, I've got a black permanent marker, and I'm going to try that next to that and see which colour is best. Try cleaning the rail tops now. It does actually improve the look. Um, I went over the black with another coat, but with the brown, and that actually looks like that might be the way to do it. Initial coat in black, touch up in the brown, I mean, that means double the work, but actually this is so much easier than using a little pot of paint and a paintbrush. So I'm going to experiment. I'm going to see what it looks like. Um, if needs be, I'll have to do it the old-fashioned, hard, or annoying way. But, well, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Um, is this actually a good ruse? You know, using the black initially, and this has got quite a soft nib. I don't know whether that's because... It's been used to death. I've been using it to mark up wood and all sorts. So the nibs got squashed and uh, pummeled. But it actually makes it a lot easier to apply over the rail chairs. And then a touch up in the brown permanent marker. I had to really search for them. Uh, it's not a, a usual colour. doesn't mean they're any more expensive. But I had to go to a proper stationer's to actually find a supply of them. Um, so uh, I'm going to do a huge chunk of track and then see how it looks. Maybe also after ballasting see if it still looks okay so um, we'll see how it goes well it's been really hard work I've spent a long long time doing some wiring work so you can see things are starting to come together and if we look underneath um, probably not a lot to see in fact nothing to see unless I bring the light down and wires are starting to snake out towards all the point motors I've got three of the four on the scissors crossing wired up. The reason the fourth one's not wired up yet is because it's a surface mounted up here. 
so I need to sort something out with that. But um, I've got the CDU wired in and that means that you can hear them moving, possibly you can see them moving. First three points wired up and that's my scissors crossing coming to life. Back up here in the loft watching some classic Indiana Jones. But that's not really what I want to show you. You can uh, go out and buy your own DVD of that or wait until it comes on something like Netflix. But what I'm up to here is fitting some point motors to the underside of a piece of wood which actually is going in this gap up here. So uh, I'm recycling a whole load of electrics from out of the shed so there's like a big mound of stuff there. And the idea here, if uh, I carefully pick this up, I've got to... I can't turn it over because the motors aren't actually fastened on yet. I've positioned all the track work, drilled the holes, uh, that's all secured on there. And the idea is that I'm going to um, do all the electrics on this side. I'm also using, if I can find it, some of these. So all the wires from these will go to a block like this, which uh, will be somewhere dangling down, where it's easy to get to. And then I can subsequently wire into all these motors with the greatest of ease. Because you can imagine when these are tucked away uh, underneath there, they're going to be really hard to get access to. So that's the idea. Well, I warned that uh, progress was going to appear to slow right down. But I've been hard at work. I'm now on to Temple of Doom, Indiana Jones. Uh, I've done the first one, Race the Lost Ark. And really, all I've really managed today is sorting out um, these points here. Now the one that's sort of balancing over the abyss, don't worry about that, there's going to be a piece inserted underneath and uh, there'll be a, a point motor goes on there, it'll all get sorted in the end. But these three points, one of which is Electrofrog and it's a case of just using what you've got. So I've wired all that up and if I go down to the second set of switches here, I can then make the points work in sequence. So yeah, three points wired up and there is a lot of work goes into that, believe me. But all reliably done. Uh, switching frog polarity as well is all sorted in there. So yeah, started on the, the upper upper layer and uh, there's still a lot to go in. I've uh, widened all the woodwork across here and then I've got to put in for, it's going to branch off a single track, there's going to be a skew bridge and then that's the beginning of the sort of the incline which goes down to the lower part of the yard which allows stock to be brought from the northern end of the yard, the arrival sidings, up to the top of the hump um, is how that's supposed to work. Right, well I'm all done for the day now. Again, another day. I've been busy actually outside doing the Volvo, fixing an ABS fault ready for its MOT on Monday. So that's taken up a lot of my time. But what I have been doing is, you can see where I was working on yesterday, I started putting in the very top of what will be, uh, there'll be a bridge there, and then it'll be an incline down um, through there, and then down through that gap and then you can see over there if I'm going to move this light because it super saturates everything when it's in shot over there you can see I've got a couple of double slips one's not got any motors attached to it and the reason for that is because that's then easier to use as a template to cut the holes for the one that does have the motors attached and I've used that little trick of having the wires to a chop block which will make wiring underneath a lot easier because I won't actually have to solder and that's something I'm going to go back and retrofit over here. I don't know why I didn't think of it before uh, but it's certainly something that uh, should work quite well. And once that little gap from there to there is done with the double slip in then that means that the third track is complete all the way round. So I can have three continuously running trains and uh, then it's a case of working on the fourth track which will come round here 
um, it splits off this the idea is somewhere around there so that there's quite a long head shunt uh, so that the trains can run on it whilst stuff shunts the yard without conflicting movements happening um, that will come down this little gap here and then what I'm probably going to do down here is because of the nature of the curves there's going to be a tight curve round here and then back round again uh, for the inner innermost track um, I will also uh, have the tracks coming down from here and they'll be a little bit further over there's going to be a gap here and that's where I'm going to put the uh, TMD and it's, it's only going to be something small there may actually be room for a turntable I don't know uh, probably might be more akin to what somewhere like Kirby Stephen East had uh, but that then means that over here over in the gloom, still waiting for the lights, they are on order. I'm going to put another point in there and that will give me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, sidings parallel for the various components of the yard. And so there'll be a lot of rolling stock will be able to actually be stored there as well as uh, being using it. So these will all come along here and uh, the ones which are off the bottom of the hump will come round here and will start to come together over here to meet up with there'll be a double slip which will be the sort of the apex of the sidings from the top of the hump meeting with the sorting sidings at the bottom of the hump and there'll be a whole load of points around here it'd be quite complicated especially because it's on a curve and on a slope and hopefully the slope's not too great which will mean that uh, stuff won't derail when it goes across it. That, that's the plan. I'll get it all nicely fettled. And then we also have this track. Uh, sorry about the super saturated light. It's coming off here and coming round. And then that's going to split in. And there's going to be some more sidings separate from the ones at the bottom of the hump. Which will then come back together and probably feed into that line there I'm guessing uh, it will have to mix in with the the double slip over here somehow so possibly just some um, a couple of loops um, actually that might be the best way to do it so point in there uh, out into uh, a loop maybe two loops and then back in again and plumbed into all that. There's a lot of planning to do. Those of you who have asked about a um, track plan, there is no track plan. I have it in my head. That's how I always do things. It's how I do most things. I hate writing down plans, drawing diagrams, because it's just not me. It's not the way I work. So it's it all makes sense in my head, and it's just a case of building it. So you just have to bear with me. But that's how I built uh, Trinity Road. That's how I built Grove Street Yard. It's how I built the garden railways, and it's also how I built um, the previous railway to all of that, which uh, has long since been dismantled. I never have a written plan. It's just the way I work, just the way I am. So there we go. Not the greatest of light up here. It doesn't really do me any favours whatsoever. So, um, yeah, you can see the shadow of everything. So uh, we're still waiting on those uh, LED lights. Gosh, I'm not wearing any makeup, so I look really haggard. That's what happens when you hit middle age. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's coming along really well. Now I've got to go and tidy the house for my uh, 40th birthday party tomorrow and 10th wedding anniversary so I've got to go and do that now <laughs> been avoiding it all day but um gonna get that done and when you come back you'll be able to see some more progress here well I've not had that much time to be up here to be honest with you it's been my 40th birthday and 10th wedding anniversary weekend uh one thing I will say <laughs> stops hassling a bit about the lights uh, they are on order they're coming by my dad he's got a source they're LED lights and um, they will be fitted when they come but until then just uh, constantly telling me about uh, how I need more light doesn't change the fact that I've ordered them and I'm waiting for them to arrive but I have been busy I finally bridged the final little bit there over there in the corner you can see the double slip it's um, got point motors underneath wired chop blocks and uh, not quite wired into anything else just yet but uh, just uh, fitted it and that closes up track number three.
three for completion. So I think it's time to uh, get three trains running. So uh, let's have a look. What's what have we got? Uh, recall. Uh, Got to go through this. Oh no, just gone past it. Uh, we'll go with that one. Enter and turn it on. Whistle, whistle. And we've made it across this double slip. Well, I think. Let's get everything else going. There we go, we've got three trains running on continuous loops, that's three out of four continuous loop tracks that are planning, all in and working. So it's slowly, slowly coming together, but uh, I've got quite a bit more to do, so he's going to kill me for having background noise whilst I'm talking, because you're, oh, it's really difficult to edit. So uh, let's turn that one off and turn that one off. So there we have it, three tracks running continuously up here in the loft and um, I'm really at a point where I've got, um, I need points, I need points, uh, but I can't dismantle the shed because that's waiting to be filmed for another project before it can be dismantled, that's not going to happen till end of April, beginning of May, so I've got a long time to wait, so what I'm going to do is I, I'm at Alexandra Palace. Uh, this weekend, uh, tomorrow actually, when, when this video goes up, I'm at Alexandra Palace tomorrow and Sunday, both days, being interviewed as part of the MRC feature. They've got a stand where they interview various people about various things. So I'll be there. If you're there, do remember to say hello uh, and uh, it'd be really good to see you. But if I look shell-shocked and confused, it's probably because I'm... Uh, getting uh, lots and lots of people saying hello and uh, well there we go just you know say hello and it'll be grand. I started on the scenery up here so um, I talked about this a little bit last time. This is one experiment using scrunched up root newspaper things like that 
and uh, then over here is a different method using the jab light insulation it's like polystyrene but it's flame resistant and that's pretty much where i've got up to and now um I, I, i'm at a point where i'm quite busy with other projects i've tried doing some of the uh, point work and you can see over here i've got uh, point work and switches all starting to come together so using the old Hornby 00 switches, they work really well actually, they're a brilliant design. I'd go as far as to say that these are the best design of switches of all time. So we've got a mix on there and uh, started wiring up some of the points underneath. Uh, the only problem is that uh, I'm running out of solder. In fact, I'm just looking now. Yes, that is all the solder I've got left. I've gone through an entire reel over the years and it's finally run out so there is all my solder i need to get another roll before i can do some more i've got two of the points underneath there wired up there's another one there just behind the tender of that uh, q6 and uh, then i've got this one over here and also the ones on top and between all of those it's going to use up all of the switches that you see here so this little control panel here will control the hidden sidings underneath and all of um, this stuff on top at this end of the yard and then of course i'm going to have to have another control panel somewhere down there as well will be a convenient location for it but it's coming along nicely uh, but i'm running out of switches that's all of the spare switches i've got left some of these were unused they were in situ but unused out in the shed but now that, um, that I'm in here, I'm going to have to use every single switch and uh, possibly even start ganging points together where I can. Uh, what's apparent is that um, I'd already done that a lot out in the shed to minimise on wiring and switch use. But here, a lot of the points, it's beneficial for them to switch on their own rather than ganged with others. So it's going to use a lot more switches. Um, but yeah, that's the way these things go. Um, uh, what else have I done? Oh, yeah, you see those two heavy-duty wires along there? That's the power bus from the CDU for all the point work. So uh, that's actually quite a long wire run, and it goes round there and underneath. And then it reappears back over here, um, where the main control panel is. So it's all coming together. And, uh, yeah, so I think I might just stop for a beer. Uh, I think I've deserved it. Uh, I've also been working hard on the Volvo, trying to get that through an MOT. And I tell you what, I'd rather have my teeth drilled than take a car and wait for it to get through MOT. There's a part that's not in stock now, um, so I can't get my car until tomorrow, maybe Thursday morning at the latest. It better be, because I need to use it this weekend. So yeah, it's where we are. Well, it finally arrived. This is going to be the sign for the name of this railway. Weir Yard, I've talked about that a bit, but uh, Zoe bought me this for my 40th birthday. So uh, I'm going to mount it on the wall over there somewhere. So I'm going to find a space and put it up. I'm going to try and do this uh, and film me doing it. So uh, let's pick a track which, uh, I don't want the ones at the front, but uh, yeah, let's just... Uh, hmm. Is that just going to be too light? That does look a bit disgusting, doesn't it? I'm going to do loads. And I want to try and do the backs as well so that we can get it from another angle. It just looks too light, doesn't it? So, not convinced about that. Really not convinced. Once it's ballasted, those sleepers, I want them dark like that, so a creosote look. We're not getting that with that. I'm not convinced. I might just go and get some, uh, some tissue paper or something and see if I can wipe down the tops of the sleepers. But in all honesty, not impressed with... Uh, maybe it's the colour. I'll have to see if I've got a darker brown somewhere. Go and see if I can find a darker brown paint and then we shall reapply and see if uh, that works. Well, I've been and had a rummage in the shed and this is all I can find. Not ideal. I really probably want water-based so I can 
then mooch it around with a bit of water, clean up the sleepers fairly readily. But I'm going to experiment a bit with this. Where I did put that brow on, I've been over, rubbed over with uh, some uh, tissue. And it has improved it, but that is a big, big job to do that all the way around. So I'm going to say no to that. Uh, but what I probably will do is, I quite like the idea, it does seem to work. If I can find a colour that is more like the sleeper colour there, so you can imagine that, but all up the sides of the rails. Now I could get spray cans, but uh, I'm just trying to find simple and easy methods to do this. So uh, let's give this a go. I'm going to uh, stop recording and uh, just get on with this because this stuff is uh, uh, well, it's got fumes in. Uh, it's not water based. So. I'm going to have to do a little bit very carefully so I don't get high off the fumes. I'm also really interested in the comments. Leave your comments and let me know which of these four different uh, colour stroke techniques you think is best. Um, the emulsion I think has been let down by being the wrong colour. And certainly that could work quite well if you just make sure you pick your colour correctly. That, uh, the second's the wood stain. It's a little bit more forgiving but just not getting the coverage. Black permanent marker, just a reminder on that. It comes out a little bit too blue for my liking. Uh, it may be the case, actually. Let's give it a fair chance. Right, that's had time to dry. So what if I go over it a second time? Does that really change anything? Again, clean the rail tops. I'm not convinced. We've still got that bluish tinge. It just ruins things. And the brown, brown permanent marker, it actually does dry brown. It's got a sort of a translucency. Let's go over it a second time. Does that improve things? I mean, doing two passes does start to use a lot of time. I don't think it changes it radically. But um, I think that's the one I'm going to use. It's uh, There's a lot of ground to cover, so unless you really, really want to suggest a very, very effective, cheap and easy to do method, then uh, that's what the one I think I might go with. But leave your comments. I'd love to hear from you. Leave them down below and I'll try and get to read them all. Even if I don't get to reply, I certainly will read all of your comments and I really appreciate uh, you leaving them there. Well, unfortunately, i uh, just got to try and uh, make that come up. You can see I've tested different power cables, different video fields, but um, it seems that this monitor has finally expired. It's really annoying because, uh, well, it was up there and now it's not. I can't seem to get it to work. It's a shame because it's. Um, I always did like this monitor. And uh, a jury rigged um, this to fit it to the wall, but try as I might, um, it's expired. I'm trying to think how old this is. I have a feeling that uh, it's um, maybe about 15 years old, so I probably had my money's worth. But you can see, I, th I suspect degaussing circuits failed uh, somehow, and uh, I'm going to see if I've got a spare downstairs. There's an awful lot of work just to get an old monitor on the wall. But I've got a proper bracket on there now, none of this jury rig nonsense. So it's up there. It's actually slightly bigger than the old one. Um, I think this is a maybe a 15 or a 16 inch, uh, whereas the old one was certainly an inch smaller. Um, so that yeah, there we are. That's my entire day has been walking out to the supermarket to get a bracket just to mount a spare monitor on the wall. You can see the plastic surrounds all broken, but it works. That's the main thing. I can go back to watching Grand Prix now. Anyway, don't forget to like this video, share it too, also subscribe to the channel if you've not already done so, and also uh, ring that bell and you'll be the first to know about new things as and when they go up. But until then, you take really good care of yourself. It's been great having you along. And this is fun, isn't it? Following the construction of this. We're going to be uh, seeing this through together. So if you've got any comments as well, leave them in the comments section down below and uh, I'll have a quick read through those. But uh, until next time, you take really good care of yourself. Bye for now.
Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Mark Anthony, Michael Churchwood, Mark McShane, Bob Threeton, Alec Ralph, Anthony Hunt and William Wade. If you'd like to help support the show, head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk. Thank you. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Knob T Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.